Why is it that I meditate and pray? One of the things that um, I start thinking is, as a child, we were raised to remember our visions and dreams when, when I was young. And every day, my mom would um, invite us to talk about our experiences. I'm the youngest of 15 children, but around the time that I was born, there were 10 of us uh, in the house. And the, the dialogue of dreaming when you put together uh, young people together, everybody had a different explanation about what experience they had at night. And so I grew up with this um, house protocol of my mom asking us, child, did you dream last night? And of course, I was always so happy to share. But one of the biggest reason that um, I'm thinking about this question, why is it that I meditate and I pray? It's because of the experiences that I had. It's because of the confirmations that I received. It's because of the support that I received. But most of all, I believe in my heart that as a child, I would, from the time that I could remember, I felt this incredible love for God, for the great mystery. In my mind as a child, I did not know exactly of this God, but what I did know was that my experiences, especially when I started to experience astral projection, that I felt that there has to be a higher source that is guiding us. And so I started to develop this love relationship for these experiences. And also in my life, I had had experiences where I had experienced illnesses as a young person, and it always took me into a place of solitude, of meditation, of course, and the continuation of the prayers. And when I prayed, I felt in my heart that, that there was an answer to the prayers. And what I mean by that is that I was confirmed perhaps through a dream or a vision that I was going to be okay, that this was something uh, in the passing. And especially right now at this time of the pandemic and the time that we are obligated to be in isolation, it has kind of come to me in a full circle. And what I'm speaking about is when I was a child, I believe that I might have been under seven years old. I received a gift of a baby sloth and I love animals, I absolutely love them, especially my baby sloth. It was such a cute sloth. And I carried her as if I was her mother. 
And I kissed her so much that before I knew it, she had passed away. And I was just brokenhearted. And I started to feel ill. And my mom kept asking me, child, are you missing your sloth? And I would say to my mom, no, I don't feel well. I'm, I, just, I just feel sick. And the days passed and I started to lose weight. And it got to the point where I just couldn't eat. And so my mom started doing some investigation on what might be going on with me. And it turned out to be that I had tuberculosis. And so immediately I was put in isolation from the rest of the family. All of my food was done separately. I was fed separately. I slept separately from everybody. And I started to experience this isolation. And all I could do is go into silent prayer, silent meditation. And I started to experience quite a bit of different experiences. Like for example, um, I would hear my brothers and sisters speaking and they would be playing outside. But I would intentionally move myself out of my body and sit on the roof of the house and watch my brothers and sisters playing. And I, and I had enough time to be comfortable with the situation and I started to do these things and so I was never far, my body was isolated, but my light body was out traveling and doing things. And it was um, a beautiful experience um, for prayer and meditation, but yet at the same time, I was left with uh, the trauma of isolation. And not only that, but... Um, I was also uh, taken uh, to be um, double-checked uh, to the capital, to a tuberculosis hospital. And I remember staying there. Um, I don't remember how long it was, but I experienced that. So at this particular time of the pandemic and what is going on with everybody around the globe um, being still, and it's, a, it's an excellent time for prayer and meditation. Thank you so very much.